All right, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down under Notre Dame. We've got uh, Ben Belden on the line from Slap the Sign. Ben joins us on a regular basis to break down the Irish, and please join him and the rest of the staff there at Slap the Sign to get you set for Notre Dame football in 2019. Let's look at the defense, which has a bevy of uh, pass rushing ends, and uh, you've got your defensive coordinator in place for a second season, so you don't have that acclimation process uh, as much uh, in regards to personnel, him knowing his personnel, uh, the players knowing his scheme, all of that has gone through an entire uh, cycle. And so you got to feel good about the Notre Dame defense. And especially since you were able to keep some of your best players away from the NFL. Right. I mean, of the 11 starters on defense, I feel pretty confident about eight of them at the very least. And, you know, I think there are guys that are going to be, um, surprising to people, myself included. Um, you mentioned the pass rushers. I mean, it's almost embarrassed. It's like an embarrassment of riches for the first, really for the first time in, I mean, Brian Kelly's tenure that Notre Dame has all of these pass rushers. Julia Quara, Dalen Hayes um, are kind of more of a, what they call a weak side drop defensive end. So it's kind of more like that defensive end outside linebacker hybrid. And then on the other side, um, you've got Khalid Kareem, who's, you know, who, flirted with the idea of going to the NFL came back as more of a traditional deep type of defensive end um, behind him. You've got a guy that I'm really excited about. His name is Ade Ogundeji, who um, when Notre Dame was still competing in the cotton bowl, meaning, you know, second quarter there when they were down, I think it was nine to three. He came up with a big sack um, when Kareem and a couple others had gotten hurt that forced Clemson to attempt a field goal. They missed. So, um, and at the time I was kind of hoping that that was going to be the turning point in the game, but regardless, he's, you know, he's come in limited snaps. He's done some good things on the big stage, um, across the defensive line, uh, you know, at tackle MDA My- Myron at tongue of Oyola, Amosa. I think I said that right now. I wow. always struggle with that. That was impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, uh, coming back from an injury last year year he he was hurt in the first game he uh broke his leg i believe um but a guy that he, he's a real junior who played well as a freshman and then last year was supposed to have an important role and got hurt and kirk heinish i mean kind of the same thing so i mean they lost jerry tillery to the draft and that's a big loss but again with depth i i mean i don't think they'll have someone that can completely replace tillery but um i don't know they've got the depth to to do it so that the drop off isn't going to be huge, I suppose. And I mean, there are, I I could sit here and I could list probably 14 or 15 guys that I think are going to get on the field at defensive line for, for Notre Dame at some point in the season. But for the sake of brevity, I won't do that, but they're deep at all of the defensive line uh, positions. It's just that some of these guys have to prove it and it'll be interesting to see who emerges um, along the defensive line. Yeah, the trouble is uh, the most difficult game may be at Georgia and also a a game at Michigan. And even though they're changing their offense and going to be less run reliant, uh, you may be a little thin inside as opposed to the bevy of pass rushers that you have on the edge. Maybe a little thin there and maybe at linebacker some concerns. Yeah, I mean, definitely the concerns with Notre Dame on the interior. So, I mean. I mentioned, uh, you know, they have guys at the interior defensive line, but, you know, not particularly proven. They really don't have anybody that's proven whatsoever at the linebacker position. I mean, nobody has played significant snaps. I mean, um, and I guess I can kind of take that back a little bit. Asmar Bilal, the uh, guy that's going to start at the inside linebacker, was their rover last year. So he has experience, but not at the position that he's going to be playing this year. Um, he had kind of started as a safety, moved to linebacker, moved him to rover. Now he's back at linebacker, kind of the way that Drew Tranquil did before last season, moving inside to the interior. And then, you know, the other linebacker, I mean, goodness, it's, uh, I mean, there are, I mean, this is a case of, it just sort of seems like there are about 10 guys that are kind of in the mix for the line, the other linebacker spot and the rover spot. And it's, and, and who gets it is sort of anybody's guess at the point, you know, one week you hear one thing, another week you hear another, and it's just kind of who knows. So uh, the good news though, I think is that 
behind the linebacking core, there's going to be two safeties in Alohi Gilman and Jalen Elliott, who both played very well at both safety spots last year that are going to be able to come down and sort of help out some of those linebackers a little bit. Those guys are going to be the leaders of the defense. So, you know, and there's also been talk that Notre Dame was going to play more of an inside out of a defense and, you know, really load up inside, try to get teams going east and west a little bit more and let some of their guys on the outside really run those guys down. Because I think speed is going to be the strength of Notre Dame's defense, but you know, up the middle, that's kind of a concern. Yeah. Most of the uh, preseason uh, publications are ranking that uh, duo of safeties as one of the best in the nation. And uh, it, it is interesting when you talk about uh, the battles that ensue in August and the um, lack of information sometimes that comes out and then you hit that first game and sometimes there's a guy in a starting lineup that you think, okay, we knew there was a name there, but uh, we didn't think that he was near the top of the depth chart and the battle for positions is so close and the lack of productivity in a given position is, is so lacking that um, maybe it's just the last few practices that the coaches have to pull the trigger and say, hey, he's been the best player. It was it was neck and neck. He's been the best player the last three weeks or the last three practices. And uh, therefore, he's getting the starting job. And, and you see those starting lineups in college football that have a, a couple uh, positions here and there that were unknown and, and people are scratching their heads because a guy may emerge here and there that uh, wasn't necessarily expected uh, to be a starting type player. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's kind of really the case for, for Notre Dame right now. It's going to come down to the wire. I mean, whoever these, these linebackers are, I mean, are really going to be, I mean, and it might change from week to week. I mean, week one, it might be two guys and then by week two, it's somebody else. Um, and I think Notre Dame's kind of prepared for that. I mean, I guess the good thing is that Notre Dame plays on that Labor Day game against Louisville. And if things don't go, uh, well with the linebacking core, then they've got, you know, the next off week to kind of fix that before then um, they host New Mexico at home. So um, they, they have a little bit of time. They've got kind of a early bye week built in to maybe if, if things aren't going well with the linebacking core, kind of fix some things. Yeah. Unless uh, Louisville becomes uh, this year's version of what Auburn was in 2013 when they went from 0 and 8 in the SEC to within five seconds of winning a national championship, then Louisville's bringing a pretty bad uh, team uh, or Notre Dame's actually traveling to Louisville. But uh, that should be uh, a pretty a substantial win. And then, as you mentioned, by week, New Mexico, there's there's uh, some buffer before the schedule gets brutal with Georgia on the road. 